episode 23 of the 2016 Skyrim Modding Guide is talking about texture mods. We'll cover some essential mods, give you some resources to help you make informed choices on your own, and then cover some of my personal favorites. Then I'll go over managing your texture mods using Mod Organizer, using some tips and tricks to fine tune things to your liking. Hey guys, this is Cal from Dirty Weasel, and in this episode we're going to be talking about texture mods. And there are a ton, just a ton to choose from. They're probably the most modded part of any Skyrim game, and there are just so many choices. I'm going to go over basically my personal choices, some essential mods, some mods that you probably know very well, and I'm going to throw you out a couple options here and there so you can make a good decision and make an informed decision. We're also going to go over through Mod Organizer, show you some tips and tricks to help you manage your texture mods, and we'll get started right away. You know, I have Mod Organizer open right there. I have a bunch of mods that are ready to go and ready to install and show you. And we are going to go first off to the essential list, and that's going to be the Static Mesh Improvement Mod, also known as SMIM by Brumbeck, mod number 8655. You know this mod primarily improves the meshes. Of course, meshes are the framework on which textures are applied, and Brumbick goes through and definitely improves them all. When you go down and you scroll through this, you can see a video by Michael from Gamer Poets, and you can view that and see kind of what goes on and makes all the big changes. You come down, you keep reading through this, and it'll tell you more about the mod. Installation, you can use it through Nexus Mod Manager or Mod Organizer, of course. There are other things, other notes that he can talk about through here. You know, there's other ones that you can look up, but basically it's going to talk more about those. So, you know, texture replacers, recommended mods, that sort of thing. But basically, I want to point out a couple different notes as far as this go. You know, if you're using Better Dynamic Snow, part of the Ruffled Feather, I just want to point this out to you real fast. Open this up in a separate link. The Ruffled Feather is offline for right now. So just so you know, it will be back. Sparrow Prince is working on it. It will be back. So when you, if you do this, and I will be using Better Dynamic Snow from the Ruffled Feather in my personal playthrough, it's not available right now, but it will be back. So read all these notes. There's good information on when to load these things, let other things go through it, and uh, just be aware of what's going on. So when you come back up into Files, you're going to see SMIM 1-89. It was done back in August of 2015. And then you have these different updates if you have older versions. I, of course, have downloaded that with Manager. And you can see it is right here. It is SMIM 1-89. Double-click to install. Okay, and you're going to get a FOMOD. It took a long time to uh, boot up there. So we have a, you know, a FOMOD for installation. Install everything without Dragonborn DLC is your first option. Install everything with Dragonborn DLC. Of course, we all have Dragonborn DLC if we're running the Legendary Edition. And then you have the light versions. But basically, I would just go ahead and install everything with Dragonborn DLC. You know, he developed this mod using a GTX 480, a 480. And, uh, you know, at this point in time, any, you know, the more modern in the last couple of years, GPUs, you'll probably be fine without causing any problems using the basic install. Install everything with Dragon Word DLC. Go ahead and install it. All right, and that would take a long time. Let's go ahead and activate it, and we are going to slide it all the way up. And my general rule on SMIM is install it at the very top, and then let all of your other ones overwrite it as needed. So that's basically your most essential mod is the Static Mesh Improvement mod. It does have some textures in it. If we go in and look into the file section, You can see it does have some textures, but it doesn't have a whole lot compared to many of the others. And the best way to do this is to install SMIM first and then go back at a later time to go ahead and, you know, let other things override it. It says most of the time they won't change the meshes. Texture mods are, of course, are the drapery that goes over the framework provided by Stack Mesh Improvement Mod. So you can see already we have something that's overriding it and it is rustic clothing. We'll come back to that in just a second. So basically, you know, it gets down to now is all of the other mods that you could have. I'm going to close this one down. All the other mods that you could have, and there's a ton of them out there. And it gets down to choosing what you really want to do and what choices you may have. And I have a resource right here. And it is the ye old list of textures by Thalassa over on the Skyrim Mods Reddit page. And I'll include this link at the top right here. 
And basically, she has put together a Excel spreadsheet of all these things. It's a Google Doc, but read through this stuff. And what she's done is she has compiled what all the different mo texture mods do and what it covers when it does cover. And you can see all the different texture mods are across the top here, and there are a ton of them. You can see all the way across, back and forth. She's got a ton of them all laid out. And then on the different categories and different things, they will change. So, you know, when you're looking at things, you have things like Skyrim Ballistic Overhaul. I'll get into that. Noble Skyrim, Skyrim HD, 2K. And you can just go through it. And there's tons and tons and tons and tons and tons. And she makes comments on what they all do. Here's my big thing is in prior episodes, we've already retextured armor. We've already retextured weapons. We've retextured some clothing. We've textured hair and faces and all the different things. But basically, we're going to start looking at other texture mods to improve the landscape, improve the environment, the architecture, pieces, and objects and different things. And this is a really good resource for you to go through and look at. I'm going to leave it on this first section all the way over to the left so you can see Skyrim Realistic Overhaul, Noble Skyrim, and Skyrim 2K HD. And I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. And you'll notice that a lot of the overlap in these three are there. Okay, so when you scroll down, you're kind of kind of look for things that, you know, may overwrite the same stuff. And there's different ways of doing this. You know, you can go through and look at these left to right or back and forth, and you can kind of scroll down and see what, what things are covered. But you see why I kind of chose these. They cover a lot of the same stuff. So when you scroll down, you keep looking and you see more and more overlap. So that's one way of doing it. And you can go back left and right. You can also filter by texture group. Give it a second to populate. And you can see here's the textures mods on the left and across the top are the different groups. So if you're just looking for, you know, let's say, what does Actors Dragon Priest, okay? You can see Skyrim HD does some stuff there and you can just go, with, that's just a different way of looking at it. But it's a great resource, look it over and you can kind of get a idea of what different mods, what different texture mods do in relationship to each other. And you can kind of, you know, look for things that are going to cover a lot of them. That's that resource. I'll include the link in the bottom of the description so you'll have that. I'm going to close this down. The first mod we can take a look at is Skyrim HD 2K Textures by Nebula and AHB Mods. Mod number 607. 607, that's pretty early on. And it is very much the standard for, you know, a texture group. And you can scroll down, you can see all the different things he does. There are multiple different packages available to you. And when you come into the file section, you can see you have the complete full, the complete light, and there is a vast difference in the size. And we're talking 1.8 million kilobytes versus 545. And then you have the optional file, cities, lights, whatever it is. You can go through and pick these all up. But I would suggest going, just choosing one of these. You know, either light or the full, it doesn't make that much of a difference. You can download that with Manager. We'll take a look at that mod organizer real fast. And you can see complete full. If you hover over it, you can know it's Skyrim 2 HD 2K textures. We'll just install it for the moment. Okay, manual textures and a README tut text. You know I don't install in my readmes, but it's all just textures. Go ahead and install that. And you can see we go ahead and activate it. We're going to slide it all the way up. The same basic rules apply. The, you know, these big overhaul ones, put it way up the top, but underneath static, me static mesh improvement mod, excuse me, and let all the smaller ones overwrite these big ones. But that's pretty much the standard. I want to give you another option. I'm going to just deactivate that so I can don't have to reactivate later on. And we're going to minimize that down. And we're going to go back to the internet and we're going to show you a separate option that covers many of the same things. And you can go to the Skyrim Realistic Overhaul by Starak. It is not available on the Nexus. It is very good and it is different. If you're looking for a different look to the game, this may be one option for you. You could, in theory, override it, but we'll, we'll get in that in just a second. Now, where to download it? And they can download it on a torrent site. And see this download right here? It's going to take you to a torrent download site. I'm going to very quickly flash it and show you where to get it because I don't want to have it bouncing around. It makes a lot of noise. So download torrent is right there. Whatever bit 
torrent downloader you use, you want to click that and it will use your BitTorrent operator. I'm not going to suggest one. You can choose one on your own. But that's the just click that button and with your torrent manager open and that will do it. I'm going to close it again real fast because I don't want all those ads to pop up. Now, after you get your, your bit client downloader of whatever you get, you're going to get a 7-zip file. And of course, with any 7-zip file, you're going to have stuff in here, textures, a readme.txt, readme.txt, readme.txt. You can read all these different things, but all you're really interested in is the, is the textures. So just like always, you know, you're going to slide it over here, open up your model organizer, and you would just drop it into your downloads tab on the right, and you'll get it. It'll just install wherever you put your download. So that's one way of doing it. So for this, if you were to install it, you get manual SRO, manual textures, optimized textures, readme.txt. I'm just I'm gonna click all these off. But all you're going to get is textures. Okay, click OK. Okay, and we're finally finished up. We'll go ahead and go down and activate it. And we're going to put it all the way back up. It's kind of the same thing as with Skyrim HD 2K textures. Now, a note about SRO. In this version, they are a combination of 1K and 2K textures. So they are a little more performance friendly than just the Skyrim HD, but they are basically cover all many, many, many of the same textures. You could, you know, overwrite them and you'll just go ahead and refresh this and click on it. You can see it's overriding Skyrim HD 2K. There are a a few mods included in Skyrim HD 2K that are not covered by SRO. You could run them just like this. And remember, when you have them in this configuration, you're not loading all the mods and the, all the textures for the two mods at the same time. Mod Organizer separates them out, and I'll show you that in the data file later on, to only load the textures that are actually being activated by Mod Organizer. So it's not like you're loading all of them. You're just going to be loading the final version. So... Anything that's not covered by Skyrim HD, you would get SROs or back and forth. You get the idea. So, but basically they are almost the same coverage of type of textures. So it's one or the other. I find performance is fine on either. So it's whatever you want to do. I've used Skyrim HD 2K textures for a long time. I wanted something different. So I went with SRO. Okay. And those are the only, you know, things you have to worry about is on a torrent site you know, just use it with caution and use a good solid bit client downloader. So that's one option is to do that. I'm going to leave Skyrim HD 2K disactivated just because I don't want to have to install it later if we're going to be doing testing. So the next mod we're going to talk about, now that we've got those out of the way, I'm going to close those both down, is Noble Skyrim Mod HD 2K and is done by Shutter. It says S-H-U-T-T-3-R, mod number 45807. I really like this mod. I like it a whole bunch. And one of the reasons why is that when you're going through Skyrim in the different cities, each of the different cities have their own look. So you can definitely change, you know, the appearance of your game. Many of the textures in the, in the vanilla version of Skyrim or even in Skyrim HD 2K a lot of the textures are reused over and over, even though they're in different cities. Noble Skyrim basically goes through and remodels a lot of the ones for the different cities, so the cities have a different feel. And the same thing goes with the different palaces and whatnot. They'll have their own separate appearance, and I really, really like that if you're looking for a different look to the game. So, on this, there is... You know, Noble Skyrim, you see some very pretty pictures. It talked about descriptions and articles, mod features, main cities and infrastructure, small towns and villages. It really does do a lot, and it does things, you know, in a different way. It does not have parallax, okay, but that's a different thing. You can use uh, parallax Project Parallax Revived, or you can find a parallax patch for Noble Skyrim. But parallax patches are a different thing, and we can talk about that some other time later on in this video. System requirements, you know, basically there's going to be two full packs, a 2K pack and a full pack performance edition. So, but we'll go over those and when we come over to the download page, we'll come back up and go to our files and there are a ton of files to look at. So you have Noble Skyrim full pack. These are all 2K textures. This pack includes everything from Noble Skyrim. You don't need anything else. Boom. Good. 
If you're using the static mesh improvement mods, which we are, you'll need the SMIM patch. And then the other version, of course, it's the performance version. It's basically mostly 2K textures, but the less important ones are down to 1K. If you're worried about performance, you could probably use the performance edition. I use the performance edition because most of the small stuff, 1K is fine for me. And then, of course, the other choice, the other thing you will need is the Noble Skyrim SMIM patch. So download either one of these that you'll want, whatever choice is appropriate for you, and you will definitely need to download the SMIM patch. Okay, the optional files are just the individual areas, but if you're doing this, go ahead and just grab one of the full main packs. You'll be much happier in the end, but just be aware they are much larger on the full pack. When you cover the mod organizer, let me do a little cleanup here. And you can see we're down to the Noble Skyrim full pack. I chose the performance edition because, you know, I don't really care too much about, you know, the small 2K textures. And uh, we're going to double click to install. And you can see Noble Skyrim Mod HD 2K manual. Right click, set data directory, textures. Click OK. All right, there we are. So it's going to be at the bottom here. We're going to activate this and we're going to slide it all the way up again. Let's see, here we go. And I'm going to place it right below Skyrim Realistic Overhaul because I prefer to have Skyrim Realistic Overhaul to be the base and then Noble Skyrim to make its own changes. If you were to place this above Skyrim Realistic Overhaul, Skyrim Realistic Overhaul would be the primary one you see most of, but I want it the other way around. And you can you can switch back and forth as you test things and see which, you know, go through the cities, look at them, and kind of get an idea of what you really prefer. So for me, my case, I want Noble Skyrim to be at the bottom, so I want it to be overriding Skyrim Realistic Overhaul or Skyrim HD, whatever choice you make. So this is going to be the primary one you see, and Skyrim Realistic Overhaul will be kind of a filler. It'll fill in different things. So the one thing you will need on this also is the Noble Skyrim SMIM patch. Double click to install. I want you to choose a different name for this. You have Noble Skyrim HD 2K. So we're going to put in SMIM patch, All right? So it has its own name. And the reason for this is you may have something that needs to be inserted between them. So it has its own name. Go and click manual, set data directory, textures, it looks good. It's gonna be down here at the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and activate it and we're going to move it up. And it needs to be below Noble Skyrim HD 2K. So as long as the patch follows both of these, you're usually safe. So you can see it's overriding SMIM. That's basically how I do it. But I always put my patches after the two mods that are being patched. This has SMIM and Noble HD 2K. So therefore the SMIM Noble Skyrim mod, the patch comes after that. So that's basically all there is to that. Okay, now we're going to carry on a bit. We're going to start talking about, you know, texture philosophy, you know, problems, troubleshooting, that sort of thing. And I've got something in mind that we'll kind of discuss when we get into Mod Organizer. I'll show you a mod that has some different options for you to think about. My mod philosophy is this. The bigger the texture, the higher the resolution you can go. So if you're talking about a mountain, a wall, something like that, a 4K texture may be a viable thing. If you're talking about a tomato, a 2K, 4K texture for tomato is not really performance-wise viable because it will drain the same amount of VRAM as a wall would for a very small thing. So you start getting lots of small objects with 4K or 2K textures on them. You're not going to see that big of a difference because you have to get up really close to the tomato to tell the difference. But it is draining a lot of VRAM resources from your card that could be better used elsewhere. Regarding big texture mods, I'm going to show you an example of this. There's a couple different ways and things that you have to be aware of. And Vivid Landscapes is a very good example of something that has a lot of things that you need to be aware of when you're talking about them. And of course, Vivid Landscapes by Hein84, mod number 49344, is a very good mod and it definitely improves on many of the landscape textures. And I'm a big fan of it. But 
there are things you have to be aware of when you're downloading this because many of the texture mods textures are 4k so when you come in you look at it in the file section you have an all-in-one 4k patch adds all the 4k textures he made install uh, 2048 archive as base so you have uncompressed normals that's even bigger 667,000 kilobytes and then you have different options as far as uh, this is the base that he talks about, the BSA Archive 2048. And then you have all, the all-in-one Loose Files 2048. So which one do you choose? Well, I went ahead and I wanted to test with the BSA Archive. And that's the one I downloaded. But you can choose whichever one you want, BSA or Loose Files, after you know, kind of seeing what I talk about. And you can make your own choice. You also have an option down in here all-in-one BSA archive for better performance and the loose files for better performance, right? So you have different things and then you also have a 1K versions, BSA and loose files, and then even all the way down to the standard Skyrim Resolution 512s. So what I did was I downloaded the all-in-one BSA. I can't remember actually, what did I do? The all-in-one BSA archive for the 2048s as an example of what you can do but just remember it is some of these textures are quite large and they will drain your vram if you're that concerned about them so i think 2k textures are probably a good integration there are notes on this make sure fixed barrel plugs equals true and your emb local is set and i will show you that in the later on when we talk about parallax uh, textures Download which one ever you want. I download the BSA archive so you can see what we're talking about when we get to problems. So Vivid Landscapes, we're going to double click to install. And you see Vivid Landscapes all in one, manual. And when you right click and you set data directory, you're going to have a BSA and an ESP. And the reason why it has an ESP is it needs to activate the archive, the BSA. So you go ahead and click OK. And it's going to be down here at the bottom. Go ahead and activate it and move it up. Now, what I would generally do on these things, where is it at? I'm going to put these after Noble Skyrim HD2K. And I have the patch after that. It's not going to overwrite anything in the Vivid Landscapes, but that's just how I like to do it. So Vivid Landscapes is now overriding Noble Skyrim Skyrim Realistic Overhaul, and SMIM. This includes a parallax. We'll talk about that in a second. One of the problems when you have a BSA archive, when you come over to your plugins and you scroll down, you will see the little broom sign saying that it is a, a default file. You do not need this ESP. There's two ways of doing that. You can deactivate it and the little broom goes away, or you can double click it, go over to optional ESPs, and move it to an optional ESP since you don't need it. Because Mod Organizer will manage it in the archives. And this is the most important thing. If you scroll down and you look for Vivid Landscapes, sometimes this will be unchecked. And when it is unchecked, it means that the Mod Organizer is not managing your BSA archive for it. And if you go into game, you may have a texture that looks kind of blue. It's a little sad. So that's one thing to look for. If you see something like that, go into your archives and make sure it is ticked. That's if you want Mod Organizer to manage your archives. So when you have a mod like Vivid Landscapes that has a BSA, there's a couple problems with it. You're not going to get a true representation of what you can do with Mod Organizer to manage your textures. And what I mean by managing your textures, you come over to Data. And this is probably what you'll see when you first check your data tab on the right. You'll see all this stuff. Immediately go down to show only conflicts. And this will go ahead and, you know, kind of break it down to just your, your conflicting mods. In other words, ones that have the lightning bolts plus and minuses right there. If you open textures, you're going to have a bunch of stuff down here. Let's just choose, how about landscape? Vivid landscapes is a good example. When you scroll down, you can see Vivid Landscapes. There's one there. It is still the last one, but it doesn't really write, overwrite a whole lot. So if you were to click on that, 
and right click and click preview, you will see the texture. But Vivid Landscapes isn't the one that's being shown. It'll only show the ones that are being overwritten, but because it's in the BSA archive, the preview manager can't show you it. Okay, so you can see all the different ones. Skyrim Realistic Overhaul versus Noble Skyrim HD. So how you get around that is there are two ways to manage this. Number one, you could go through and install all the loose files. In other words, it won't be in an archive anymore. It'll just be all loose files and they're probably easier to manage. Most people say BSA archive. Eh, for most mods, it's okay. But if you're trying to manage your texture mods, get the loose files. If for whatever reason you find some mod later on that is only a BSA and doesn't have an option to do loose files, don't feel like you're going to be unable to manage your mods. Just know that there's a different way of doing things. So if you go up to configure settings and you go over to plugins, you have a BSA extractor. By default, the BSA extractor is not enabled, so it's disabled. If you double click on false, you'll get a drop down and click true. And you can go ahead and close it. Now, if you were to reinstall it or install it on a directly from your download tab, reinstall the mod, and we have Vivid Landscapes all in one, manuals, we're doing the same thing, set data directory, that's fine, we'll go ahead and just install it that way, and we're going to replace it. Now, since the BSA extractor has done its work, if you come over to data files under file tree, you can now see the meshes and the textures where before you couldn't, all you could see was the BSA. Okay, now close that down. We'll go back to our plugins, vivid landscapes. We need to do the same thing again. Since we don't need that ESP, move it up and close it. So now let's go back into our archives and we'll see what we, well, not our archives, our data file and go into our textures, actually archives first, you can see Vivid Landscapes is no longer there. And then data, you go into textures, and we did landscape again. You can come down, Vivid Landscapes you can see is no longer managed as a BSA. So when you right click on it, hit preview, you can now see Vivid Landscapes is included in the same texture files category that the others were. And you can see then you have Skyrim Realistic Overhaul and Noble Skyrim HD. Why is this important, you may be asking? Well, you can say, if I don't like field grass 01.dds, the one provided by Vivid Landscapes, and you prefer SROs or Noble Skyrim HDs, you can manage that. Because a lot of times you want Vivid Landscapes to overwrite as much as possible, but you just don't like that one texture and you hate it so much. So what you'll do is you can get rid of that one texture by going into here and come over to your file tree, go into your textures, and we know it was landscapes, and we can see it was field grass 01.dds. It's the same one over here, right? Field grass, you slide it over. No, stop that. Slide it over, we'll have to do that again. File tree, fieldgrass01.dds and fieldgrass01ndds. So, go into your textures, into your landscapes, you find fieldgrass01dds and fieldgrass01ndds. You can right click and delete those mods. You delete it from this installation. Delete it, yes. And delete it, yes. And close. If you go back this way and come back into it, into textures again, and you go into landscape, you can see the field grass. I probably will have a hard time finding it now. Field grass, there it is. Field grass 01.dds is now being managed by Noble Skyrim HD. So that's one way of doing things. Now, I've told you how to manage all this stuff. We're going to talk about parallax mods. Vivid Landscapes, once again, provides a very good example because it has parallax textures enabled. And basically what that's going to do is add a kind of a faux 3D effect 
And there is a pretty good uh, video on the topic that I'll include a link to if you want to get into what it does and how it kind of does what it's doing by Chabal. It's it's fairly good video. It's not one of my favorites, but it, it explains it fairly well. It adds a third layer. You know, there is a the drapery that goes over it. There is a faux texture to kind of give it uh, the appearance of 3D. And a parallax increases that 3D effect by adding a third layer into it. So you have a DDS, which is the texture. You have an NDDS, which is kind of a the texture to the texture. And then a parallax adds a third layer on top of it. Kind of get that. Well, Vivid Landscapes has that. And the parallax effect is somewhat visible without an ENB, but if you have an ENB, it is much more visible when you have an ENB active and you have to have the correct ENB settings. So we talked about ENB settings and the requirements thereof, and you can see... Where is it? Oh, it was on the download page. See, I'm a little disorganized today. I don't have enough coffee. And you can see, where is this note? There it is. Fix parallax bugs equals true. You can see that note right there in your ENB local.ini. Okay, I'll show you where that's at. So ENB local.ini, you know I keep my Skyrim right here. And you can go down and you can find ENB local.ini. And you can open up. And you fix parallax is, roll down, I'm not really organized today. Fix parallax, parallax bugs equals true. A lot of times, depending on what ENB binary you're using, this may be set to false. So fix parallax bugs equals true needs to be active. Fix parallax terrain, probably not, right? It doesn't say any notes about that, but you can try that as well to see if it works it. That's where you change that file. So we are going to, I'm just going to leave that in. I do like the way Vivid Landscapes handles certain things. And I'm going to leave the ones that we have in there. It doesn't change a lot of different things, but it changes enough to make me kind of say, yeah, I know I like, I like the Vivid Landscapes for stuff. This is my personal setup. Static Mesh Improvement Mod, Skyrim Realistic Overhauls, Noble Skyrim HD, and then Vivid Landscapes, and then the patch. Okay, that's my personal setup for the main texture mods. Now, before you start, I know you're saying to yourself, Cal, there's so many other texture mods. What do we choose? Well, that's really up to you, but I'm going to kind of direct you uh, in a certain way, and that is to Gamwich. You know, Gamwich is one of the hardest working texture modders out there, and he has tons. He has 46, 46 different texture mods. And there are a ton of different things that he has done. And you can go ahead and look him up and you will find textures for everything. Rustic clothing, which I just upgraded to. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, Nord armor, rustic monuments and tombstones, word walls. Just, just tons and tons of different things. And he is a very good resource you know, for all sorts of the little bric-a-brac clutter. Alchemy tables, dinnerware, pottery, silverware, rugs, pelts, all sorts of things. One Mountain, if you don't like the textures provided by Vivid Landscapes or some of the others, go get One Mountain. It looks great and it's very high quality and will probably improve your performance. So these are all very good things to know. And that's why I'm kind of directing you towards Gamwich's. Because he has so many good mods and good textures that are very good quality. It's a good choice. That's where he's going. Now, I mentioned I was using a different clothing mod, and we installed that in another episode. I don't remember the, the number, but Gamwich just finished Rusty Clothing, and it is very, very good. And it is mostly complete. You know, there's a few DLCs that aren't completely done yet. He's still working on, I think it's Dawn Garden and Dragonborn, but he just finished Hearthfires. They look great. I thought that, you know, this is a good opportunity to install a new clothing mod that really improves things. So when you come over to your files on this, he has it separated out in a couple different ways. It's a little confusing when you look at this, all right? You have 4K, right? 4K textures down here for rustic clothing. 
1K and 2K textures and a simply 2K texture. You're going to need one of these three. I choose the 1K, 2K because shoes don't need to have 2K textures. So half size normals for both for footwear and headwear. 1K would be fine, so a mixture of 2K and 1K. If you want 2K or 4K, if you're doing 4K for screenshot or whatnot, this is probably a good choice. But 1K, 2K is fine with me. Rusted Clothing Hearth Fires. This is his only DLC that he has included in this. It is a 2K only. So, on Mod Organizer, I had... You can see here on the Downloads tab, I have Rusted Clothing Skyrim 2K, 1K. That's the main file. Double-click to install that. Manual. Right-click, set data directory. Textures only. It's very easy. We'll just go ahead and install it. Okay, it's going to be down here at the bottom. We're going to activate it. We're also going to activate the Rusted Clothing Hardfires 2K. Manual, same thing. It has the same name because we're just going to merge it in. Set data directory, textures. Click OK. And we're going to merge that in. So now they're all there. And we can go ahead and, you know, it's giving me a version update. I'm just going to ignore. Where's my ignore update? For right now because it is final dash a i think so when you check this it's not going to be no stop it when you check this it's not going to be overriding a bunch but it's going to be overriding smim and that's perfectly fine so you can put this anywhere you wanted to really because it is a texture mod you can put it down here with your with your eyeballs and your armor if you wanted or you can put it up high it's not going to make that much of a difference because you can see it's not being overwritten by anything else so if you see later on that Gamwich adds, you know, Dongar, Dragonborn, individual components, all you have to do is go ahead and download it and merge it into the rest, right? So you know what you have. And that's basically, you know, kind of how I do things. And because it's just a texture mod, I can make those changes. I was using HD clothing before. Now I'm using rusted clothing. Everybody looks great and it's not going to affect the game any because it's just a texture mod. So that's kind of it. You know, like I said, you know, I don't want to go over every texture mod that you can have. You can change the entire thing. I showed you on the archives and then, you know, make sure that any BSAs that you may install are uh, probably activated in your archive and let mod organizer handle the BSAs. And I showed you how to manage the different textures in here so you can see what you're doing and then delete the ones you don't like. So that's it. I hope that was informative. I didn't show you a lot of different mods. I showed you my basics, my essential, my preferred ones, and kind of gave you direction on how to manage your texture mods appropriately. So that's it for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode. My name's Cal. I'm from Nerdy Weasel, and I'm signing off.